What a way to start a day. Room service. Breakfast in bed. I only get this on Mother's Day. What a treat. Holy moly. <laughs> That's a breakfast. It's a breakfast for a lumberjack. I surrender. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how festive they have this decorated. It's just gorgeous. So pretty. Day of the night because I guess the road conditions deteriorated a lot. And we always tell our kids if they get in trouble, just spend the night somewhere. They have an emergency credit card, so we're leading by example. We're gonna go over here to the lodge. Uh, where we stayed last night was called the Towers, but they have this area called the Lodge. And I'm kind of thinking it might be a nice venue for our son's graduation. This is the entrance to the lodge. It's really pretty. Look at it, it has like little streams and I think this would be pretty big fire pit. And then there's a bridge that goes over to the tower where they have the casino and that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is more quiet, I think. The hotel staff they were so gracious. They took us on a tour of some guest rooms um, because we are gonna have some out of town guests flying into Syracuse. And it's relatively close to the airport. It's about 20 minutes uh, away from his campus. So it's the perfect location. And we found a banquet room that's a good size. They're gonna cater his graduation party. So we got everything kind of like reserved and as it gets closer to his graduation, we'll pick out a menu and things like that. But the gist of it, you know, we have the foundation for the graduation party. So I'm like a lot less stressed and it's just gonna work out so lovely. The lodge has a bridge that goes to the main tower where all of the entertainment and the shops and the casino and all the, you know activities are so we're going to try to make it like a all weekend kind of um experience of, over two nights and three days so I, it's just perfect i couldn't ask for anything more for his graduation party so we got that all booked so this would be a king yeah and then there would be two doubles no. okay yeah the standard that's two doubles also let's Type see of suite. we have all the class places a tub and a shower and walk oh. in bathroom. Most doors open up to where we came in. Oh, that's yeah. nice. So they can access it there. Oh, no. Okay. We've had a nice drive home. The roads have been very good today. You can see how pretty these flowers are staying. Every couple of days, I just trim uh, the stems at an angle, add new water, and flower feed and this has been eight days so far. Just beautiful. I'm making a pot roast and what I've done is I've taken a couple tablespoons of olive oil and seared off the roast in the pan over medium to medium high heat. I seasoned it with salt and pepper, garlic. I have some bay leaves, like three or four of them in there. And I'm gonna add probably a teaspoon of this browning sauce. Now that it's been seared, I'm gonna put the top on it and cook it on medium low heat. And I'll turn it about every half hour. It's been about a half an hour and I turned it over and I'm just gonna let this cook again for another half hour. I'll put the top back on it. This is how my grandma used to make her pot roast and it's so delicious. At the end, you have this concentrated liquid that makes the best gravy and the outside of the pot roast is so flavorful. It's so different than cooking in a crock pot. After about the first hour, um, I add about four cups of beef stock to the pot. 
before this, I just let the juices from the rose kind of come out. But now I'm going to add four cups of beef stock, put the top back on it, and continue to cook the roast. After you add the beef stock and it comes to temperature, you just want to uh, have the top just off center just a little bit so that it can uh, evaporate the beef stock. I just keep turning it every half an hour and the uh, liquid is, is reducing as it cooks and the roast is getting super tender, lots of flavor. After a while, all of the broth um, gets evaporated off and all you have left is this oil and it um, kind of gets like caramelizy onto the meat. So you want to cook it for um, a few more minutes, like 10 minutes on each side and the end and all like that to get it really caramelized. And then we'll take the roast out and make a delicious gravy. You can see how this has gotten just this wonderful crust caramelization on the outside. When you take a little piece of it, it kind of like puckers your mouth. It's such an intense flavor. Now with the oil that's left in the pan, I'm gonna add some flour, about equal amounts, and cook this for a minute or so until it gets cooked all the way through. I'm gonna add four cups of water, and I try to scrape the pan clean, like deglaze the whole pan. Get all of that color off the, the edge of the pan and the bottom of the pan. All of the bits from the side of the pan and the bottom of the pan have been scraped up and it's almost like a chocolatey brown gravy that's so intense with flavor it'll be the best gravy you guys ever make. I went ahead and I removed the bay leaves. I'm going to bring this up to temperature so it comes to a simmer and then we'll be ready to serve dinner. Just before we serve it I'm going to test it for salt and pepper. needs just a little bit of salt. So that's what it looks like plated up. We have the roast beef with the really chocolate brown, delicious gravy, mashed potatoes, and fresh peas. Give this uh, technique a try. I'm sure you'll like it. You just have to do it a day when you're at home and have the time to kind of babysit it, but it's delicious. Mm -hmm.